Ollante Tabo, probably one of the most visually perplexing sites within Peru, claimed to be that of the Incas and at an altitude of 2,792 meters above sea level. Once one takes a good look at this place, it becomes near impossible to believe that the Incan civilization, with their access to such limited technologies, could have created such a place. During the Inca Empire, Ollante Tabo was the royal estate of Emperor Pacacuti. According to academia, when he conquered the region, he built the town and the ceremonial center within. It is such an impressive, perfectly placed strategic structure that, at the time of the Spanish conquest, it served as a stronghold for Manco Inco Yupanqui, leader of the Inca resistance. However, as mentioned many times on our channel, how could a civilization create such astonishing architecture at such an early time within known history? How did they create some of these sites? What purpose could they have served? Some of the ruins that can be found in Peru, and in particular Ollante Tambo, you cannot help but wonder if, for example, the giant stairs carved into the hillside were intended for human use then why create them to such enormous scales? According to the history books, around the mid-15th century, the Incan emperor Pacacuti conquered Ollantaytambo, including the surrounding region. All were incorporated into his personal estate. The emperor then claims to have rebuilt the town with sumptuous constructions and undertook extensive harassing and masterfully irrigating the Urubamba Valley notably without any prior knowledge of these techniques known of. Were these giant ledge steps once used by giants? Or possibly, had a use similar to the ancient site known as Moray? Moray also claimed to be Incan. This mind-boggling site had an astonishing purpose. It seems the builders of this enormous structure were masters of horticulture. They had somehow figured out that by creating these raised ledges at particular angles to the seasonal winds and sun, using this to slowly acclimatize plants previously not suitable to that climate over many generations. Perhaps this is what Oliente Tambo was used for. Moray is little shared by academia. Indeed, its existence and one's function is difficult to explain with modern paradigms. And although not giants, we feel the site's once use was no less impressive. Many of the words which we use in the modern day are derived from far more ancient sources than most would imagine. Many of the words that we use for objects and activities, which have been around since time immemorial, have their named origins placed near the birth of some of the earliest civilizations to have ever walked upon our planet. As such, if beings such as giants did once exist on Earth, one would not only expect to find enormous unexplained ruins, but also these lexical inspirations given to the activities undertaken by these huge people. Is it then just a mere coincidence that ancient enormous stone walls are often named Cyclopean? Cyclops, having once been an ancient one-eyed giant within ancient Greek and Roman mythology, is it also but a mere coincidence that the giant found within biblical stories named Goliath was also a one-eyed beast? Was the name given to these enormous ruins a clue to their original builders? A clue left upon spoken language, a remnant far more difficult to erase from history than any physical remains. Found everywhere on Earth, and even dotting some of the most remote tropical islands, these Cyclopean ruins still perplex us to this day. Many of the ancient Cyclopean ruins that can be found within developed areas have often been draped with modern architecture. Many suspect that this is often done in an attempt to conceal the true nature of these sites. Italy is a particularly good example of a country drenched in Cyclopean architecture yet chooses to overlook such wonders in favor of modern development. Scattered throughout ancient Latinium, and yet again, coincidentally, placed at the location of a later flourishing civilization, and actually the first real modern world superpower, Rome, 
are ruins undoubtedly left by an as yet not publicly disclosed or studied branch of ancient beings who were capable of feats we are yet to unravel. Many classical writers and historians, including Homer, Hesiod, Plutarch, Thuclides, and Diodorus Siculus, among others, posited the idea that the Cyclopean ruins of Italy and others within Europe were erected by this now extinct Cyclopean race. And we seemingly continue to carry this torch. For, to heavily research, not only these particular areas of ancient architecture, but the many individuals who have made remarkable discoveries over the years, along with reels of newspaper archives with an interest in these particular finds, and also the suspected individuals tasked with the possible concealment of such. The proposition of an unknown ancient race of controversial beings, possibly much larger than modern humans, having once existed on our planet, has become overwhelming. Why are ancient ruins, seemingly built by a race of giants, actually named after giants? A name with origins placed far within our distant past. Did an ancient race of giants once build the countless unexplained ruins found on virtually every continent? We find the evidence within some areas to suggest such overwhelming. Sardinia is undoubtedly one of the most overlooked areas of ancient interest to be found anywhere in the world. Located within the Mediterranean, it's a large Italian island with 2,000 kilometers of coastline dotted with sandy beaches. The interior, however, contains some of the most heavily concentrated ancient ruins to be found anywhere. Thousands of structures, known as naragis, litter the island. Stone structures masterfully shaped like beehives, often with domed roofs, that from inside reveal the mastery of the original constructors, with the largest and oldest of which, known as Sunuragi in Barumini. The Nuragi is a unique feature of the island of Sardinia that, according to mainstream academia, were constructed during the Nuragic Age, between 1900 and 730 BC. However, the Naraji is not the only compelling ancient ruin to be found upon the island, that regardless of the mundane academic explanation for their origins, are indicative of an enigmatic, highly capable, lost group of ancient beings, locally said to have been of tremendous size. Known as the Giant's Graves, or Tumba de Gigantes locally, the legends that can be found still circulating within the local population tell of giants having once been responsible for these structures, with the graves supporting such claims due to their enormous scale. However, predictably, academics argue that the size of these tombs were merely due to them being mass graves, although any remains from these supposed neurogic inhabitants dated to the Bronze Age remain elusive. Additionally, many of these giant graves, which number around 800, are constructed using enormous megalithic stones many tons in weight. This use of enormous stones is strangely absent from the 2,000 or so naraji that are instead constructed from more manageably sized stones. However, interestingly, legends in other areas of the Med, such as the Navita Destudomes found in Menorca, also built with manageable stones, shares these legends of giants having once been responsible a structure built for human habitation by supposed giants using similarly sized stones as the Naraja. Gantia, found on yet another Mediterranean island called Gozo, shares these same local legends of giant builders. Is it mere coincidence that all of these ancient ruins are found within the same global vicinity as each other? An extremely ancient ritual, still practiced within Sardinia, predating Christianity by a considerable time, could hold clues to the construction of these giants' graves. A carnival so old, the story behind its purpose has been lost throughout the ages. Depicting monsters of giant proportions, often covered in cowbells and adorned with horns or goat's heads, these monsters march through the local town. 
controlled as they go by human-looking counterparts, named the Isohadoras, known as the Carnival of the Mamuthonas. What exactly the Mamuthonas are, or indeed possibly were, is also lost to history. Although these beasts, who grunt and stomp through the town center, are tethered and controlled by the Isohadoras as they go. Were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? Were they utilized for their strength and size by these Isohadoras to build the inexplicable structures still found within Sardinia? Are these widespread yet openly shared local legends passed down from generation to generation pertaining to giants having once been responsible for Sardinia's intriguing ruins a true story? With the visually stunning ancient ritual still preserved by the Sardinians, clues to the origins of the giants' graves and indeed the Nuragis? We find the spectacle practiced by the Sardinians, along with their local legends surrounding the giants' graves, highly compelling. There are countless astonishing ruins upon the islands of Malta, many of which we have covered in the past, some in particular being of such an advanced nature that many a dedicated researcher has come away from said sites with a strong suspicion and awareness of stolen evidence, suggesting to them that whoever built these buildings must have had some form of assistance from someone or something with a far greater intellect than that of ancient or even modern man. One in particular, a structure with such mystifying properties, we have now covered it on two occasions here on our channel. However, upon the lesser-known Maltese island of Gozo stands the oldest yet no less astounding ruin of Malta, known as Gigantia. Thought to mean Giant's Tower, it is a megalithic temple complex of tremendous antiquity, with many concluding that it far predates even that of the Great Pyramid complex of Giza. A group of Neolithic stones still left in formation, which continue to give modern man a small glimpse into the astonishing past abilities of its builders. Thanks to the moderate, long-lasting temperate climes of the Mediterranean, Gigantia's megaliths still stand, giving us a chance to explore this remarkable site. And what must be considered the most intriguing factor surrounding its construction is the ancient folklore that can still be found swirling within the minds of the local Goatsians. This legend tells of an ancient giant, a female, who long after her supposed demise, continued to be worshipped here, with many of the temple's elements now recognized as ceremonial sites, specifically oriented around the rites of female fertility. This folklore has also been intriguingly corroborated by a number of astute, honest researchers, who have, over the years, successfully unearthed numerous figurines and statues at site, specifically associated with this ancient cult. According to local Gozatan folklore, a giantess who ate nothing but bread, beans, and honey once bore a child here, from a man selected from the common people. And with the child hanging from her shoulder, she built these temples to not only use as her abode, but to later be used as her burial location, and thus a place of worship. Yet according to academia, who disregard such legends as having any historical accuracy, still concede that the effort to create such a site was undeniably a remarkable feat, especially when one considers that these monuments were constructed at a time even before the wheel had been introduced, and indeed predates the invention of metal tools. However, as they so fervently deny the possibility of past ancient giants, we feel they should consider the most remarkable characteristics of Gigantia being the scale of its still existing yet highly eroded megalithic blocks, with some still in situ, weighing far in excess of 10 tons, somehow transported from a faraway location and placed within the temple walls with such ease and skill that to deny the fact that even if not the work of an ancient giant, but the accomplishments of a past civilization, that they were clearly far greater than those currently claimed within the history books, and to deny such reality to us 
is a sign of negligence in their responsibility to convey to a learning population the truth of world history. Who built Gigantia? How did they build it, with such enormous stones, and with such an awareness of cardinal orientations? Was it, as the legend states, once built single-handedly by an ancient female giant? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.